Hi guys, and welcome back to this week's episode of Let's Chat Ethics. I'm your co-host, Ariana. And I'm your other co-host, Amanda. And this week, we're going to talk about um, a paper where basically researchers taught um, a system, or they built a system rather. (laughs) I don't want to say taught, I think that personalizes systems a lot a bit too much but basically they train the system to detect people's moral principles and um, so maybe for our og listeners <laughs> we have you know this is reminding you of the i think it was our second episode or first episode or... it was our first episode oh wow alfie. <laughs> our first episode of oh, alfie, alfie. <laughs> Wow, okay, so Alfie, for those who don't remember, it was a chatbot that was built by, I think it was a university in Germany. Yeah, um, yeah. That could make kind of moral judgments. So they basically, they showed that uh, word embeddings, which we've talked about before, it's like um, a vector representation of language. They contain societies or the particular group that you've extracted these embeddings from. Um, it contains their... Um, moral judgments and moral ideas so um i guess it kind of makes sense from that that um you might be able to detect people's moral principles um so i'll describe kind of what the experiment is uh, how they've done it so basically they had people um rate their opinions their own opinions so it was 500 volunteers uh, were given questionnaires where they had to rate eight topics, uh, the political and um, moral, I guess. So, like, uh, gun ownership, drugs, same-sex marriage, um, and they had to rate how strongly they agreed or disagreed with each um, each policy from a zero to five. And then they were asked to write out explanations for their their opinions. And... Then they, they used this data to train a model. So basically the model was shown the, the language that the person had used and the model was taught to predict whether they agreed or disagreed with uh, that particular topic, right? So let's say uh, same-sex marriage. Um, and yeah, this was this is kind of interesting. I think um, it makes sense that you would be able to tell. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I think for for humans, you know, if you read somebody explaining that they agree or disagree with um, same sex marriage, it's gonna make it pretty like duh. Of course, you can tell because that's what they're writing about, right? Um, but computers don't actually understand language, <laughs> so maybe it's a bit interesting that they the the model was able to predict not just how like whether they agreed or not I think it was not a binary prediction but uh, actually on on a rating scale from zero to five how strongly they they agreed based on this yeah I always find the 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 rating of one to five an interesting way to kind of figure out how what your moral principles are or kind of what your personality is you know the um I've forgotten the name of that test. Oh, is it the Briggs Myers test? That's something that I know <laughs> in America and um my experience in New York actually a lot of companies when they interview you would get you to take that personality test and then that would decide whether they think you'll be a good fit for the team. And I always found that really interesting and it kind of uh, kind of tells you what personality trait you are, which means can they that they believe that could tell like how well you'd be able to navigate certain situations in the workplace like how organized you would be how you'd deal with controversy or whatever um but I've always wondered if that can actually be accurate because those type of tests you you I felt like people rate themselves what they think they want to be rather than necessarily Mm -hmm. what they actually are so even for example with this one if you're rating yourself as one to five on I mean, maybe your opinions of same sex marriage maybe you're you're actually more conservative than you want to admit you are so you you might put yourself down as a a two uh I'm sorry you might put down yourself as a yeah as a, wait was it one <laughs> so it's it? so zero to five I think uh five disagrees totally agree 
Okay, never mind. Okay, so you might put yourself down as like a four because you like a, I pretty much I totally agree with same sex marriage when really secretly you might be a one or a two, but you don't necessarily want to be that person, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of like when you were like, I'm not racist, but. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sort of, yeah, yeah, where you might think, oh, I don't want to say that I'm against it, so I'm going to. Yeah, so I guess in a way you could be kind of lying to the model. So the model is actually predicting a little bit off, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I, I feel like a lot of times in those situations, I thought those tests, um, I know loads of people were like super hyped by those tests and a lot of uh, tech startups seem to be, um, in New York anyway, were seeming to use that test as um, kind of, uh, the the Maya Briggs one or whatever it's called, I think it's Maya Briggs, yeah, as deciding who would be suitable based on all their different principles in their workforce. But I do think people tend to actually not accurately rate themselves because you always, especially in a in an interview situation, you'll want to come across as like you're what you think they want rather than what you necessarily are. So yeah, I think that's in an interesting article actually. Um, I mean, it's cool that I think it's cool that they've they've tried to to do that. But can it can a system really predict people's moral principles? Yeah, I think I don't know. I guess it ties in maybe a little bit with the uh, emotion AI and that kind of thing. Um, I also wonder, you know, in this this example, they're using text about that specific issue, right? But I think you know, there's already language differences. We know there's differences in language used depending on your your gender for example mm -hmm. um and i would be interested to know if there's also language differences based on your political opinions maybe beyond that specific topic i mean of course i think the way you talk about same-sex marriage will say something about how you feel about same-sex marriage right and it could be that even if you're sort of lying about it right so maybe you're saying yeah i'm not racist but <laughs> i'm not homophobic but um you know you i what's the word i'm trying to look for i guess it's kind of outwardly lying but your your choice of words maybe gives away something that you're trying to to hide right um so because yeah usually if you're saying I'm not racist, but you're usually about to say something quite racist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be, yeah, but I'd be curious to know how well this could work on non, obviously politicized um, data. Oh, for example, like could a company run such an algorithm over your tweets, right? Maybe somebody, a company that's considering hiring you and then essentially put you in in a chart of this is where you place politically based on your tweets or something um mm -hmm. or your facebook posts even well, if you're tweeting about the british bake-off <laughs> but that is the thing and also yeah I, I just i wonder what um i i think it's an interesting experiment obviously like in it's a, a good idea to do different experiments like this but then I wonder like you said how will this transcend into um everyday life like if this was going to be used like you were saying um it could be used though because like I was saying the pest I feel I feel like personally that personality test is not that much different like rating yourself one to five how much do you disagree of you know like how would you rate yourself are you organized one to five of this and then how would you rate yourself are you um do you enjoy being in social settings one to five yeah and then that can accumulate what they think you are and then people actually will make hiring decisions based off of that which yeah. seems which would seem like crazy but people genuinely do because they're like oh no because in my company everyone in uh, I work with is a I think they call them different, like AHP or N12. Yeah, what is <laughs> oh, the INTP? Or... Yeah, yeah. All these. I, I'm a yeah. I'm a this this and a, and like and I. So I just wonder, like you were saying, will they then use this to go through like your Twitter history or different things to then decide um, is that person good enough to work with? But I think on on stuff with like Twitter history, I know loads of people have been called out for their past uh tweets 
mm-hmm. even like pop, popular influencers, popular um, people who don't uh, nowadays say anything controversial who've come across as um, like positive public figures. They've Someone has searched in the little bar to find something bad that they've said when they were like 12. And mm-hmm. I'm sure if anyone dove into their old Twitter history from when they were young, they might have said something that they wouldn't agree with potentially now. But yeah, so if imagine if you have a system doing that, that's kind of like scope out your thoughts. Because I'm sure most people's political opinion or their opinions on something like same-sex marriage might have changed from when you were 15 to like 30. Yeah. But but unfortunately, the way Twitter and stuff is, if that tweet comes out when you're in your 30s and it comes up, everyone's going to be oh my God, you're this is your opinion and it's um, kind of this then cancel culture comes in. So that would be yeah. crazy if that was the case. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking when I was like an early teenager, I remember that um, it was bef- before feminism was cool. And <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it was when everybody was like, oh, feminism is that, you know, women are superior to men. And so you'd be like, no, I think everybody's equal. I'm not a feminist. And I mean, today I would definitely say I, I am a feminist and I'm sure at that time I said, no, no, I'm not a feminist. Uh, and I am quite happy that I didn't have Twitter or, and I mean, those things were already around when I was a teenager, at least when I was like in my later teens. It was probably around before that. I just wasn't into that. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm quite glad those things are, are gone. Uh, yeah and Bye. and I would imagine that for people who have had it longer you know when this thing suddenly pops up for you yeah I think we should all have the opportunity to to evolve from from your tweets so I wonder if they were to build a model that could detect your political inclinations from your tweets would they only do it based on your tweets from the last one two years would it like consider all your tweets but maybe like lower that like maybe do it in a weighted way so that like tweets that are older than five years count less or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like how how would they how would they kind of do that that would actually be up now I'm thinking deep I'm like god that would be worrying actually if if you had a model that um companies were using to to go off twitter and maybe facebook <laughs> facebook statuses or something like that to decide yeah. whether they like what your political view is and then what your maybe overall cultural views are and stuff like that and that's why they should hire you or not but that sounds like crazy but i'm sure that could easily happen i and mean it, i think based on on the paper we're discussing um it's perfectly reasonable i mean all the things they can get from your twitter uh, your twitter your twitter um <laughs> or, or other social media things right like even your your captions on instagram and i actually i'm sure using computer vision they can get things from your the actual images you post um so i don't think it's wild to think that they could build a system that could do that i don't know how accurate it would be but like i mean based on the you know all the like creepy ad- adverts that you get that are like seem so specifically targeted at you, and that's from the the information that you've provided Facebook essentially or whatever social media platform. So they obviously have very very accurate models for people, or pretty accurate models, I think. Um, so it's definitely I- not wild for me to think. I don't know. That's the information that's available to Facebook itself. Um, I. Sp- I think not all your data that you share with Facebook is available to anybody who wants to use Facebook advertisement or their API. Um, but it's it's definitely a possibility. And I mean, I, I think even without that, obviously, you need to be careful about what you're posting on social media. I, um, I remember when I was applying for university 10 years ago now. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> Um, you know, oh, we were advised crazy. to, yeah, I remember all my friends changing their, their names on Facebook to something ridiculous so that universities couldn't find them and see all their like pictures of them doing. I things. definitely did that. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely took my surname off of Facebook and just put my middle name. Yeah. Um, so I think back then, even then we were aware that 
your social media life can impact your um your real life not real life but you know <laughs> oh what am i trying to say employment opportunities etc like you know what um, i yeah oh sorry yeah no i was just gonna say i do think that actually as much as people might not want to admit this in themselves but social media is now part of your identity everyone's identity I mean yeah unless you're unless you're someone who is not using any social media but any form of social media now I would say is is a curated part of your identity whether that's LinkedIn Instagram like Pinterest even like you know Twitter all these different things it's giving people um a kind of rounded view like if you're using Pinterest they'll be able to tell you oh wow this girl's really interested I don't know in like neutral interiors and she likes you know different like (laughs) different designs do you mean and then and LinkedIn will be then like oh this girl's applying for operations jobs so she's an operationals I just had this thought of like you get rejected from a job and they're like I just really didn't like that floral sofa you pinned (laughs) You clearly have questionable taste and we can't have you in our company. <laughs> I know, I'm laughing, but then I'm like, that. you know what? I'm sure that that's happened yeah. somewhere, you know. I'm I'm genuinely sure it has. Cause I, and yeah, we've been, you saying this 10 years ago, but it is so true. We've, for the, since I can remember since uni now, um, people have been saying, you know, make sure you don't put X, Y, and Z on social media. And, you know, like I remember when I was, starting to finish my undergraduate and obviously everyone's starting to apply for jobs everyone's like oh my god make sure your social media looks clean because companies will be googling you and it's all these so it is part of our identity and it, I guess mm-hmm. companies will say that says a lot about who you are by yeah. what you do on social media even though some it might not this is the thing even though sadly that might just be a tiny small identity of who you actually are but unfortunately, that's kind of representing you as a whole now in the modern world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, wow. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I was thinking, you know, this week with everything that's been going on in the US um, and a lot of the people who have been arrested for um, smashing the pat- okay, the capital. <laughs> I don't know. Hang on terrorism (laughs) yeah our capital building yeah yeah uh, they've been arrested based on what they they actually shared this stuff on on social media and um i've seen some some people online that were kind of laughing about it because i think some of them are a bit older like maybe baby boomers so the generation before the millennials um who were always warning millennials stop putting everything on social media and now they've been arrested for the stuff they've put on social media and you know we had to worry about posting pictures of us drinking before we were 18 or 21 in the u.s you know um so yikes um yeah yeah i wonder what um what's your thought of, of making arrests from base of social media I mean, I think if you're posting yourself actually doing something illegal, there's no, like, why are you going around providing evidence <laughs> that you've done something? Like, I um, I was listening to this other podcast, uh, was it the Emily D. Baker podcast? It's like the this podcast about law, um, and she's, she's American, and she was talking about this, and she was saying that she was getting Minority Report vibes from this. Um which I couldn't totally agree with because I think if you're posting yourself, like a picture of yourself um, on the like the speaker podium in the US, like in the Capitol having broken into the building, then you have done something illegal in order to be there. Whereas a minority report, they're kind of, you know, they're um, preemptively arresting people, etc based on a prediction that they might commit a crime or that they will commit a crime, right? Um, yeah, like, I I feel like if you, I broke into someone's house that I posted a picture of me on Facebook breaking yeah. into the house, then I should expect to get arrested, really. Yeah. So I, I don't really see what the sort of the argument is here that 
um, they shouldn't be if you've provided photographic evidence that you've done something that is illegal, then I I mean, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if anything, I was like, you've literally just given the jury, the judge and the police everything they needed to, yeah. to lock you up, really. I think, but that, that to me genuinely does show that people still do not realise how influential social media actually is I still feel like a lot of people still see it as this kind of just like random platform that you're just chatting with people as if it's like private and it's and if, as if it's the same of you like having a conversation with someone in front of you saying oh I'm going to break into this house but instead mm-hmm. they're going to write it on a Facebook caption and <laughs> think I, I still feel people don't really understand that it's actually a space that we can all see like the, the police can see, the government know what's happening, like tech yeah. companies are monitoring. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not even our platform really. Like it feels like our platform, but we don't own it. Do you know what I mean? We yeah. don't really have ownership in it. Yeah, I wonder to what, to what extent it's a lot to do with how easy it is like from an interface perspective to share things on, on social media, right? Like Instagram, you just open the app and swipe right and bam, you can take a picture and share it and you know similarly with other it, it's just so quick that you don't have time i think you know before um a lot of people didn't have smartphones so the only way to post things on facebook was actually through the browser and so you had to actually transfer the pictures from your camera or your um your phone to to your laptop or your computer and then upload them to the website and you had to go and manually tag people and it was like a whole thing right and I think that maybe gave us a little bit more time and steps to be like eh, actually is this a picture I want on social media maybe not um, yeah but, <laughs> you know I, I, I remember when I was a teenager my biggest concern was like my friends are going to post a picture that's very unflattering of me <laughs> And I'd be like, how dare you tag <laughs> yeah. me in this? I look like a whale. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. <laughs> but right now it's just so fast. And I would imagine that like, I mean, I, I obviously don't agree with everything that's happened in the US, but I, I could imagine that like as a social movement with all these people that you agree with, you suddenly belong to this group. You've got this anger and resentment. So you get kind of carried away to go and storm the Capitol. And then, you know, what do you do? in 2020 2021 when something exciting is happening in your life you post it on social media <laughs> it's like 100 percent. yeah you've been in quarantine for what is this is eight months nine months ten months who knows 20 years <laughs> yeah i was gonna say at this Probably. point it feels like it feels like we're in the year 3000 <laughs> yeah it's probably the most exciting thing that has happened to you so you're probably going to post it and I I don't know I'm not taking um, responsibility away from the people who who have done this obviously Um, I completely do not agree with uh, that but I think from a kind of a human perspective I can understand it's not that I think they thought it was a good idea I think they just didn't really think like stop and think about it and we've kind of enabled through social media we've enabled this this ability to just post whatever pops into our mind immediately and yeah i think also probably the this whole like likes and shares and follows and all of that also has that effect of oh yeah i'm gonna post this and i'm gonna get so many likes it's gonna be amazing so you are it's not only easy to quickly post things but it's so rewarding when people start liking your stuff right yeah, I definitely think it's a lot of uh, instant gratification, which is what social media brings, like, most people. Like, you're feeling insecure and then, wow, you get some likes, so you're feeling like then you feel good about yourself. But, yeah, I think that, yeah, that mob mentality that happened definitely was something about how they got carried away. But I also do think um, definitely privilege fell into their white privilege because I think, I actually genuinely do think that the majority of them wouldn't have even considered that they might get arrested because they thought, well they they actually see themselves as above the law like we're white men we can do and they even said there was some like cops who were on their days off shock horror (laughs) some like american cops who were 
were part of the mob and I think that to me also fell into the fact that they they thought with their privilege they thought oh okay we can just post this and there won't be a consequence and that's why some apparently a lot of them are like actually <gasps> outraged and shocked that they've been arrested because they thought that they were that above the war I mean above the above the law so yeah yeah whereas if you flip reverse in like anyone during the black lives matter protest any black person wouldn't have dared to have done what they're doing posting no. pictures themselves because they would have instantly ended up in jail so i think it was like also that they're also them getting caught up in the mob mentality and also think genuinely knowing that they could or thinking they could get away with it and that they're above the law yeah yeah 100 percent um and yeah, I think that was something that has kind of come up a lot, that actually if it had been um, a Black Lives Matter movement, then hopefully you would have just been arrested. Based on previous history, you probably would have been shot. That's um, exactly that, yeah. It's, so, yeah, I think the... Yeah, I mean, the whole thing doesn't add up to me, The how they just got into the building in the first place, but I guess that's the story for another day, because I think we're running out of time. Yes, we are. Okay, well, this was our actually first recorded episode of the year. It was indeed. It was indeed. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed last week's episode with Mark Zerke and CDI. Um, yeah, we actually recorded that during the Christmas break, which was which was fun. Yeah. And, well, we, we look forward to talking to you guys next week. And of course, if you want to reach out to us on uh, social media, we're at Let's Chat Ethics on Twitter. And if you want to email us, we're at Let's Chat Ethics at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.